Come for the bread, stay for the politics. This is, I'm Ben Walsh, and this is Let Them Eat Bread. Welcome back to Let Them Eat Bread, everybody. We enjoyed our week off. Hopefully you did too. This week we are back making a French style loaf. Now this is not your traditional baguette, but it's going to be somewhat similar. And because it's not exactly a baguette, I don't feel too worried about not doing it the exact way a baguette should be made. And to that effect, I do not have the appropriate tooling with me. However, in order to make our loaves more like a baguette, I'm gonna try two different methods of making it kind of into that beautiful long shape that we've all come to appreciate, all right? The first one is going to involve a rolling pin, and the second one is just gonna be roughly shaping it, all right? This recipe is actually fairly fast compared to many recipes we make on this show. It only rises one time. So this whole recipe will be done in less than two and a half hours, okay? Which is lightning fast when you're making bread. The other thing that makes this particular recipe interesting is that it goes into a cold oven. So we're gonna talk about that later in the show. Um, and our bread rises a little longer. So we're gonna have an extra long politics segment today, but it does mean that your bread will be ready for you faster than ever. All right, let's get started. All right, guys, first up, we are going to get ourselves a large mixing bowl, and into that bowl is gonna go two cups of hot water. We're talking at least 100 degrees Fahrenheit, not over 115. Next up is one tablespoon of white or granulated sugar. To that, we are going to add one and a half packages of active dry yeast or three and three eighths teaspoon, all right? Very complicated, just make sure you get it right. You need a lot of yeast for this. Then we're gonna give those a mixy mix, and once we do that, we are gonna let those sit for about five minutes. Make sure it's thoroughly combined. You are not going to dissolve the yeast, but you will dissolve the sugar, and you just wanna make sure that's fully combined so the yeast can bloom, all right? I'm telling you five minutes, and I'm walking off camera, and I'm walking back on camera, theoretically five minutes later, and ta-da, look how beautiful our yeast is blooming. You can't see that, of course, because I've kind of hidden the ball on this one. My apologies. Next up, we have our flour. We're going to be using five to six cups of hard wheat flour. I found, and we're adding one flour at a time. We're adding one bit at a time. Then our tablespoon of salt. Guys, for this one, I used probably closer to six cups of flour. You definitely want to use less than five. A hard wheat flour requires a lot more liquid, and I did not realize when that when I was making it. So just keep adding one at a time. Mix to combine. Make sure it's mostly or completely mixed in um, before you add the next one. Uh, because if you don't, it's going to be much harder to add them as you go. Again, this recipe actually needs more liquid, so that dumping of the end, doing them, not a good idea. It took me forever to stir, and it will become very difficult to stir. I'm just, you can see here, I'm just getting off all of the bits of flour that were stuck to my spoon before I poured this out. And then kneading this, if you used the amount of flour that I put in the recipe is going to be very difficult. So it says to knead for 10 minutes. I ended up kneading it for over 20 minutes, and I've literally sped this camera speed up over 20 times because it just was so difficult to knead. It does not come out that kind of soft tacky that we're used to when we're kneading something like this because of the hard flour. So your options here are either to reduce the amount of flour you use so that you get that kind of your normal stickier, tackier dough, um, because it's not going to pass the window pane test. It really doesn't function like that, unfortunately. So what you're going to need to do is keep kneading this. Actually, if you can use a bread machine or a standing mixer, you definitely should, because uh, it's just really difficult to do. Next up, we're oiling our bowl with the usual amount of oil. I uh, probably used a little much here, but that's all right. We're just stirring this around and making sure the bowl is adequately oiled. And then, of course, once I'm done doing whatever it is that I'm doing right now, uh, we're going to put the bread in the bowl, give it a quick toss. Now, because mine was so dry, I made sure that every square inch of this was covered in oil. You do not have to do that, okay? Next, we're going to cover this with some plastic wrap just to make sure that we have uh, do not let any moisture out of this bowl, especially since it's so dry. Then cover with our tea towel to rise. We'll set our timer for an hour and a half to two hours. And live Ben is going to take over in just a sec. All right, so we have kneaded our bread. We have coated our bowl with oil and we have set our bread to rise. Our timer is set for an hour and a half. If you are sticking with us for our politics portion and our special non-segmented segment, then I will see you in just a second once I do a little bit of cleanup. 
If you are not staying with the politics portion, then I will see you in about an hour and 30 minutes, and we will catch up to shape our loaves in the two ways that I mentioned we were going to do earlier, and then we're going to throw them right in the oven, okay? So stick around if you want to. If not, I'll see you in an hour and a half, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we have our bread, and boom, look at that. It actually rose despite being kind of dry. So I'm glad I put as much oil on as I did. So now we're going to take our bread out of our bowl, and we're once we do that, we are going to give it a quick knead to just incorporate some of that oil that's in there, hopefully add a little bit of moisture to the dough. Now, you don't need to do this, and you don't need to use much oil if you did took my advice earlier and just use less flour, especially if you're using hard wheat flour like I'm using here. So I'm just kneading this together, getting ready. Next, we're gonna divide it by weight. Mine was 44 and change ounces. I did a quick cut here uh, and let's see if I got it to the right weight. Eh, 22-ish, more or less, doesn't really matter. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna shape our two loaves. Okay, so the first way we're gonna shape our first loaf is we're gonna use a rolling pin. I'm using a French style rolling pin here to essentially create a giant rectangle, okay? And just so you're just gonna work this slowly but surely out into a rectangle. There's no specific specifications that are necessary here. Just kind of roll it out as as much of a rectangle as you possibly can, as thin as you can get it. Because what we're gonna do afterwards, and what you're gonna see in a moment here, once we have rolled this out to a nice uh, large rectangle, is we're gonna start rolling this up from one side and pinching the ends as we go. So what you're gonna see here is just me rolling this up very carefully, making sure to keep out as much air as possible and just pinching the seams on both sides, okay? And actually this one turned out much better than the one I'm doing now, which is just shaping it with my hand. So I highly recommend uh, the roll method if you can use it, it it comes out with a much nicer loaf at the end of the day. So I, I highly recommend that as opposed to free forming it. Um, and I'm glad I tried it. So please use that one. All right, next up, we're going to take our cornmeal. It says three tablespoons, but I actually don't think you need that much. Just keep it heavily cornmealed. And then we're going to place our breads on here. Final preparation before we chuck them in the oven. We are taking one, oh, sorry, we are slicing first. We are cake making cuts in our bread, four on each one. I am using um, a very sharp knife that was gifted to me by my uncle. So thank you, uncle, for literally making me this knife. Next, we are going to take one tablespoon of egg white and one tablespoon of cold water, mix those together, and coat every nook and cranny of your bread with these. Okay, you're just seeing me do it on one. Every little bit counts. Get it in as many nooks and crannies as you possibly can, including the scoring you just made. And just repeat that on the other loaf of bread. Now what we're going to do, we're going to put these in a cold oven, okay? A cold oven, do not preheat your oven, 400 degrees for 35 minutes, okay? This is going to, be, it's an interesting way of doing things, but it does work. It was done exactly on time. It was reading 207 degrees for me. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy. I will see you next time. Bye for now. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, Throw a like on it, share with your friends, and subscribe for more of our content. You can also find all of our videos and clips on YouTube.com. Just search Let Them Eat Bread and you'll find all of our content. Alright guys, see you next time. Bye for now.